So Tim, yesterday I was asking Jordan, tell me about this journey that we're taking. She goes, well, this is going to save you an hour and this is what it's going to look like. She goes, this is what it's going to look like. And it's a five minute journey. And now that's what we're actually taking over there. So I just landed in India, Mumbai, and I am at the Land's End Hotel, Taj Land's End. We've got a day of interviews with Harper's Bazaar, Sunday Midday, Ranveer Show, Beer Biceps, one of the biggest podcasts. Going to sign 200 books. I've uh, got a busy day ahead, and we've just come from being in LA, New York, London in the last seven days. How's it going, guys? How you doing? How you doing? Hey. How you doing? How you doing, guys? Who are these guys? I think they're from the um, the Ranveer show by Beer Biceps. I believe they're from there, but he hasn't walked in yet, so I'm assuming they're his team. And all I have is you, Tim. One person Sorry about that. with seven belts. With seven, what are these called? Webbing. Webbing. With seven webbings. <laughs> Bro, it's good to see you. Likewise. Good to finally meet you after all Likewise. these years. Yeah, I'm happy to be back, man. This is the first time we're meeting in person. And, uh, Do you want to live as a monk again? <laughs> <laughs> I think I would want to be wherever I can best serve. That's what I've realized. There was a time in my life where being a monk was the best way I could serve. But now if I was to go back there, maybe that wouldn't be service. Maybe that would be selfishness. Mm. Because it would be so personally motivated. But actually, where I am right now is where I can serve the most from. Thank you for this fantastic conversation and all the luck for the book as well. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thanks the best, man. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you for being so patient. Eight rules of love. Um, how to find it, keep it, and let it go. Very interesting, Jen. Congratulations. Thank you so much. School. Thank you. Thank you for um, having me. It's already uh, getting a lot of reviews and has become one of the best-selling books. Why did you feel the need to write a book about love? So I believe that there are four important decisions we make in life. The first one is, how do I feel about myself? And Think Like a Monk helps you answer that question. The second one is, who do I give my love to and who do I receive love from? That's what this book is all about. The third question is, how do I live? Like, how do I make money? What do I do for work? And the fourth question is, how do I serve the world? And so I believe that the quality of your life is based on the quality of those four decisions. So my work is dedicated to helping people make better decisions in those areas. And I think love is one of those areas that we make the worst decisions and worst choices. And I'm hoping that this book helps people make better choices and better decisions in love. Again, congratulations on thank your you. book. And uh, we hope to see more from you. Yes, thank you so much. Such a pleasure. Thank, thank you for your time. You. Thank you. We did it. We did it. We did it. Well done. That was great. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's up? What are we doing today? Today, <laughs> we are going on a Super Vogue. Yay! We're going to do the Vogue India digital cover together, which we're very excited about because we both get to wear beautiful Indian outfits together. We love Indian clothes. We love being in, India. Being in India, we're in India right now, we're in Mumbai, yeah. and we're very, very excited. So excited, I'm so excited to see what they put us in. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Bit more 
more about the Vogue What's shoot that? and what you're going to be wearing today? Um, we had a slight idea from what they sent us on the PDF, but you just never know. Cause surprises they, are fun. Surprises are so fun. <laughs> love surprises in my life. <laughs> you like surprises, Jen? I love, love surprises. surprises. If they're good. <laughs> That's the caveat. It has to be a good surprise. So, Jim, yesterday I was asking Jordan, tell me about this journey that we're taking. She goes, well, this is going to save you an hour, and this is what it's going to look like. She goes, this is what it's going to look like. And it's a five minute journey. And now that's what we're actually taking over there. Life-changing book you read? So the best book, life-changing book I've ever read is probably, I've read a ton of books about Martin Luther King growing up and none of them are written by him, they're compilations of his writings, his letters, his, his thoughts and so like any of those I'd put as my most life-changing books. My favourite books are about people's real lives because I think you learn so much more by studying someone's life than by anything else. Often people also think that me and Radhi are perfect for each other and that we, uh, that we have a perfect relationship. And I think in the book I constantly tell stories about arguments that we have or things that went wrong or challenges that we've overcome in order for people to recognize that everyone's human, everyone's going through the same thing. Like there is no couple out there in the world that doesn't argue, there's no couple out there in the world that doesn't have challenges, there's no couple out there in the world that doesn't have to work on it all the time, including us, including everyone you see in the movies, including everyone that you watch every day on social media or TV. And so I think that's where my personal story comes into the book. You enjoying the shit, mate? I am. I am enjoying it. Anytime I'm with Radhi, that's my ideal work day. An ideal work day is when I'm with my wife because I can stare at her. I can poke her, I can laugh with her. It's actually my, I'm trying to construct a life where I can just see her all day. <laughs> it's true, it's actually true. I just, I literally want to create a life where all I can do is be with Radhi all day. My, my dream also. <laughs> I would say love is work. When you look at the research, when you look at the studies, when you look at real love, I think we want love to be a feeling but in reality, love is work. There is nothing in the world that sustains without work. And I think that the idea that love is a feeling is often what also lets us accept abuse or toxicity in relationships. One day we feel good with someone, even if they treat us really badly. But we say, oh, but it felt good that day. It felt, they were really good to me for that one moment. It doesn't matter how bad they were for the rest of the time. And so I think, Love being a feeling is, can be quite dangerous. But when love is commitment, when it's consistent action, when it's repeated positive behaviors, that's love. And often that doesn't feel magical, it doesn't feel cool, but it's far more fulfilling to the heart because you know it's real. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What's one thing that you love about your character? It could be that you're kind. It could be that you're compassionate. It could be that you're empathetic. And what you'll realize is when you carry this self-love within yourself, you now won't look for other people to love you. You'll have so much more love to give them. And I think when you don't have self-love, you're always expecting love. But when you have self-love, you can walk around and express love and share it with other people. Thank you all of you. Thank you to Ashton as well, I'm so grateful for your time and energy. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone.